Hey there, my name is John Ellison. I'm an entrepreneur on a mission. And today is day six of a 30 day series where I'm gonna share a little bit about my journey as an entrepreneur. From when I dropped out of university in Loyola at 18 to running a tech company that failed miserably all the way through to where I am now with lots of countries and ventures, successes and failures in between. And today, Saturday, I'm gonna talk about rest and routine. For me, I have a propensity to work, work, work. I learned it from my father who set a great example in some regards and uh, a not so great example in others in that he had this amazing work ethic. As a business owner and entrepreneur, he was always working harder, waking up earlier and doing more. But as I was a uh, young entrepreneur who decided to get up and move to Israel after my first company failed, I wanted to learn Hebrew. I wanted to change the scene and go on a bit of a spiritual journey to answer some of life's bigger questions about who am I and what's wrong with the world and what can I do to help fix it? Uh, those are some noisy chickens over there. If you can hear them, that's what making all that noise. Um, I was really dissatisfied with the answers that the kind of conservative evangelical Christian upbringing gave me about those big questions. And I wanted to go on a journey myself. And one of the first things that really struck me about being in Israel was that on Saturdays, even Friday evening through to Saturday, everything was shut. And you were basically forced to rest because nothing was open. And without my really wanting it to, I discovered this power of the Sabbath or the Shabbat or the day of rest, whatever you want to call it. This millennia old tradition of slowing down to not work, to not till the soil, to just relax and eat food and celebrate and be with family. And actually, as I started doing the Shabbat more often, I actually, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed switching off my brain. And when I was taking a course called Learning How to Learn online, I think it's on Coursera. It's an amazing course. I definitely recommend it. Um, I learned that there's actually science behind rest. And the lecturer talks about how there are these two fundamental modes of thinking. A focused mode, which most of us are in most of the time, and a diffuse mode, which is when we rest and we relax our mind. And there's a particular technique that creates kind of an optimal balance between focus and rest, focused and diffuse thinking. It's called the Pomodoro technique. And as I walk you through my productivity system and my work setup, I'll show you the little timers I have on my desk to help me do that technique more easily. And the Pomodoro technique, if you haven't tried it before, is great because you set a 25 minute timer, you focus on one task and you do it for 25 minutes. And then the alarm goes off and you rest, you lay on the floor, you exercise, you don't think, you switch off your brain. And that balance between focused and diffuse thinking allows your brain to absorb information and perform much better than it could if you were just constantly focused. Which with phones is our default way of operating. And actually it's quite toxic to constantly be thinking and constantly be focusing on something. So the Shabbat gave me this new structure in Israel. Of one day a week I'm just going to rest. And the Pomodoro technique gave me this new structure in my work routine of every 25 minutes I'm going to rest for at least five. And I found myself really enjoying these times of separation from the focused work. And actually, that's when the most kind of profound ideas come, is in meditation or in exercise or relaxation. And so I really encourage you to take that time out of your life, out of your week, out of your day, to just give your mind a break and see what happens. See what breakthrough thoughts emerge. See if you can almost fall asleep and tap into that subconscious. So another story that I wanted to share that is related to this is that of the morning routine, which is very significant in regards to rest and recovery and building a foundation upon which to do great and meaningful work. I met this Welsh builder named Alan Middleton in Israel. He was 55, almost exactly my mom's age when I met him. And we became amazing friends after a short 
few weeks of conflict because I was getting on his nerves as a young, naive, and annoying American uh, trying to help out on a volunteer project in the desert of Israel that he had been running for months. Um, Alan taught me the importance of starting your day in a peaceful and restful place. I'm not exactly sure what I was doing, but I was probably waking up and checking my phone or getting on my computer like I did. And Alan just said, hey, mate, put all that stuff away and watch the sunrise. Listen to the birds and just be still for a little bit and see what happens. So I did, I trusted him, you know, he had this amazing power. He came from a completely different way of thinking and living and doing. He was a stonemason for goodness sake. I was a geeky techie guy and so I trusted him and I tried it and it was amazing. The power that was moving in me allowed me to grow and to grieve. Uh, I was going through a really hard time. I'd broken up with my girlfriend at the time and I went to the desert to rest, but I wasn't giving my mind a chance to rest. I didn't know how to process what I had gone through. And as all of us are facing the realities of the pandemic, of this Black Lives Matter movement that is grasping for civil liberties that we thought we had, but actually so much of society never has really experienced in any consistent and profound way. As we struggle with these massive political, ideological, and biological issues, how can we rest our minds and our bodies? How can we rest our souls in the routines of everyday life, in the seven day cycles that we use to get things done? How can we let go? and let those powerful moments of the subconscious emerge to tell us what we need to do to make a difference, to nudge us in directions that are more healthy, that we can be better contributors, better entrepreneurs, better employees, whoever we are, I think there is a wisdom that speaks to us when we are still. So that's my moment for today. I'm taking a bit of a rest and also I'm celebrating with an orange wine from a local wine company called Substrata because I passed my life in UK test today, uh, which if you don't know is a very arduous and kind of ridiculous test to prove that you can become a citizen because you remember dates about uh, civil wars and magistrates and the Iron Age and British <laughs> Olympians and ridiculous things that I just crammed my brain with for three weeks. But hey, I'm on my way to becoming a British citizen and Resk played a really key role in my journey getting here. I hope you've had a great weekend with friends and family. I hope you can rest and try it out. Try out the Pomodoro technique. Try out a morning routine. Uh, I'll talk about my morning routine in another session because that I think warrants a deep dive. And big cheers to Alan Middleton for getting me started along my way. Thanks.